I know I probably shouldn't be saying that I'm hurt by it because I'm still in school, I don't have a job, but to see that women like my mom, my aunt, my grandmother, it's hard to see that they get pushed through so much just to come out with so little, but they make it seem like they're okay because they know that they're going to get to the top one way or another. Welcome to the Shop Podcast. Um, I'm Grace, my pronouns are they, them. I go to Avonworth and I'm really excited to be here. Hi, I'm Anise, my pronouns are she, her. I go to South Fayette and I just can't wait to see how this goes. Today we're going to be talking about Women's History Month, which is actually a really important month because it celebrates the many contributions that women have made to society. Um, Women's History Month has been around for a really long time. The first celebration of women's history was during the week of March 7th in 1982. Um, Then it became a whole month in 1987. Each year, Women's History Month actually has a theme, and this year it is Valiant Women of the Vote, Refusing to be Silenced. This stems from the fact that last year was the 100th year anniversary of women getting the right to vote, which was the 19th Amendment. And as many of the celebrations were canceled due due to the due to the pandemic this year we are commemorating all of the work that has been done to achieve this great accomplishment i would like to quickly talk about some important women that chose to stand out instead of hiding in the shadows first we have mary curie she was the first woman to win a nobel prize in physics and she funded the science of radioactivity next we have rosalind franklin the actual person to to discover that the fact that DNA is a double helix. And Rosalind, in her honor, got a hall at a college in London named after her. Frida Kahlo is a Mexican artist who is very famous, and she's mostly known for her colorful, um, brilliant portraits, self-portraits. She liked to paint herself to show all of her little details and aspects to show to other women that they are important no matter what they look like. And last we have Wilma Rodoff. She's the first woman to win a to win three gold medals during the 1960s Olympic Games. There are obviously many more women that we would love to talk about, but we can't really put them all in this one session. Some like a really important part of Women's History Month is feminism. Um, which is the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality of the sexes. Um, Because for a long time, women were looked down upon for no reason other than some chromosomes, and it just really doesn't make sense, and it's unfair. Um, And feminism, even though it has the term femme in it, it's not because they want women to be above men, it's all about equality. Um, and if women were above men, that wouldn't be equal, which isn't what anyone wants. The first wave of feminism was during the women's suffrage movement, movement, and it has generally continued on with particular resurgence during the 80s and 200s, 200s, 2000s. Feminism includes fighting for rights for trans women, especially trans women of color, don't be a T-E-R-F, trans ex- exclusionary radical feminist. That's not cool, bro. Yeah, feminism is for everyone, um, trans women or cis women. One big part of how women were discriminated against in the past was the wage gap and bias in the workforce. One thing that a lot of people recognized is that 42% of women in the U.S. have experienced gender discrimination at work. doesn't matter if it's mainly a woman job or mainly a man job and a woman gets put in that position. They never really get the full um, ownership of that position. The women's account for just 3% of fortune for 500 CEOs, and then there are fewer than 15% of corporate executives at the top companies, saying that mainly men 
like to push women out of the position when women keep trying to climb to the top? Uh, yeah, these statistics are just crazy. Like 40% of people agree that men have more right to a job than women when roles are scarce. And that just makes no sense. Like there's no reason why women would be less qualified. And it just, it's so hard to read things like that because it just, it doesn't make sense. And it's unfair and it's unjust. And the problem is it's, still going on today and we'd really like to think that we have evolved as a society to the point where gender just really shouldn't matter so much but it obviously still does because it's all real i would like to go back to the women's suffrage um topic so this campaign started decades before the civil war it was during the 1820s and 30s where most states had extended the money and all the jobs to all the white men regards if they were men at all it was towards the white men at this time women started feeling like they had no point in just i wouldn't say no point in existing but no points in how their role in life would be they didn't want to just feel like a stay-at-home mother or a maid. They wanted to show that they're powerful and can help men with things that they need help with. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. They were just like, they're really just like constantly being objectified before they had rights. But yeah, I they were just completely treated as objects and that just seems so unfair. So, speaking of unfair, when the women thought it was time to fight against them, they called themselves the cult of true womanhood. It's the idea that only true women um, could come together to provide more than just a wife, a mother, or a waitress. They wanted to prove that they are more important than just women that they can be men if they wanted to and if they needed to at a moment in time i think that's definitely true um and some of the old ways people viewed women still hold true today in our society um like some people still view women as lesser um just like less capable um, and less, like, able to make decisions well, and, um, you can see it with, like, the lack of women in office, like, it's incredible that we now have, um, a female vice president, like, I am so proud, um, but it's also, the other side is, it's a little disappointing that it took us this long, like, I'm happy we're here now, but I wish we could have been here a lot sooner. I totally agree with that. I am definitely never thought, because I knew that we would get to a point in time, I just didn't think it would be this late. I am glad that I'm witnessing it, but I just didn't think it would be this late in life that we would actually have a woman in office, or that people would actually consider voting to have her there, or putting her there, and not just seeing her as a downgrade to men. Yeah. Um, it's crazy to witness sexism firsthand because i feel like a lot because i grew up like pretty sheltered so i just thought like and i was always treated the exact same as my brothers and um i always had like the experience that like sexism was some like far off thing that couldn't really affect me and then i was called like bossy in school for just like being a leader um and anytime i expressed like emotions i was called like too emotional um even though i know a man in my same position wouldn't be called those things i totally get that um i would in my personal life i don't believe i've experienced it face to face but i feel like i have behind my back because I've 
done something that no man thought a woman could do. And I've had a friend come up to me and say, so-and-so said you did this and it made him feel very uncomfortable. Or so-and-so said that you are able to put something together that he isn't, which is a man's job. And I'm sitting thinking, when did it become a man's world when men and women both have to come together to be able to live this life perfectly as it can be because if it was only a man's world we wouldn't be in the best place we possibly could be yeah there are so many amazing women who have just completely changed history and without them we wouldn't be anywhere near where we are today yes and speaking of those amazing women we figured out that the National Women's Suffrage Association was founded by Elizabeth Candy Shelton and Susan B. Anthony. They began this during the point in time where women thought it was right for them to finally fight for the civil rights while this was also happening during the Civil War and a lot of men were doing a lot of jobs during the fighting while women had to stay at home to protect the kids. They all thought it was time to come together and finally prove that they can do this and that they will, no matter what other people say. Yeah, and I feel like women have been constantly proving themselves ever since then. Um, we've only shown people that we are more capable than they ever thought, and we only continue to break boundaries, and I think that's incredible. Yes. Um, for this campaign, it started in 1890 with two groups that emerged together from the National Women's Suffrage Association. Elizabeth was the first organization's president, so she organized it from the ground up, and we are still trying to continue what she started. We will never forget that she was the one to bring such light into people's eyes, bring a new perspective. Yeah, and show that women had important thoughts and opinions and their the way they think matters. With this and this whole, it's, people started continuing calling it a political argument because women weren't getting equal rights or so and so but women wanted to see it as an equal opportunity not a political statement people argued numerous amount of times and wanted to while women were arguing with them for that they wanted their white their rights to vote because they thought it would mobilize in numerous voting which would help with all of the votes towards the president or the governors or we hope the governesses and we would just fight our way through and we're still trying to continue to fight our way through yeah i find it really disappointing that they took something as simple and important and almost obvious as seeing women as like beyond that just as people was seen as politics when really it's just morality and human decency yeah like it seems i, I guess it just seems so obvious that all genders are equal and you shouldn't discriminate against anyone for their gender identity but that's just like some people just really don't think that way there was a point in time that many middle class white people were swayed once again by the argument that the women the white women should be able to vote or should count as equal as men do in their jobs so yeah a man think... can fix a car and a woman can is what's said but in reality, a woman can. It's just men don't give them the time to show and prove themselves that they can. I also find it incredibly important to highlight that there are definite differences between 
the women's suffrage movement for white women and the women's suffrage movement for women of color because it's just such a different like world and like they're both discriminated against because of their gender but um women of color just had racism thrown on top and it's just incredible that like they continue to fight today to be seen as equal as they should be me personally being a woman of color it is hard to get through this life being told that you're worthless and you're not needed and being pushed down to a level i never thought i can be at but once realizing that those negative things could help you build a big gigantic positive bubble around yourself can help prove that you can be stronger than you thought that you could be and proving to other people is not one of the most um well-known things because others really just think that we should just leave it alone and um it'll solve itself but proving to someone that you can be better is one of the greatest feelings because you get to show that I have a strength that I never knew I had. Speaking of women and men with different jobs and their equality in the jobs with money. So the gender wage gap refers to the difference in earnings between a woman and a man. The experts have calculated that this gap in multitude of ways, but the varying calculations point to a conclusion that women constantly earn less than men, and that the gap is wider for most women of color. It's wide for women, but wider for women of color. Yeah, on average, um women make 82 cents for every dollar earned by a man. And that's just disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what else to say about it. I, I know I probably shouldn't be saying that I'm hurt by it because I'm still in school. I don't have a job. But to see that women like my mom, my aunt, my grandmother, it's hard to see that they get pushed through so much just to come out with so little, but they make it seem like they're okay because they know that they're going to get to the top one way or another. And seeing that makes me believe that even though I'm still in school, I can still be able to push my way to the top, no matter all the obstacles that come my way. If my mother can push through them, with all the difficulty of men, people with color, jobs, it's proof to me that I can also push through. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, if we learn one thing during Women's History Month, it's just the resilience that women have shown time and time again, um, from fighting for equal wages to um, the wave of feminism in the 80s and 2000s all the way back to the first wave of feminism during the suffrage movement um all the people we talked about before all the incredible women like marie curie um just pushed their way through and really just proved something and i that's just so important and so incredible that um they could do that so we could be where we are today, having our voices heard and having our opinions matter to someone. I couldn't think of a better way to say that. I honestly thought that was amazing. Um, and one thing I realized are that men are given higher performance ratings than women with identical qualifications and behaviors. So women, basically, that's basically saying that women can do the same thing a guy can do, but men are just proven to be better. And I don't want to take that, like I'm trying not to take that to heart to saying that I can't do something that a man can do because men are usually prone to be better at that thing or I 
can't succeed in life if there isn't a man to help me with this big problem. And I'm trying so hard not to take that to heart, but I know that with all the women that have proved when starting can end up in this high place, then I know I can make it and I'm not going to let a man stay in my way. Yeah, it definitely is possible. So the difference in years of experience show a lot because even if you have the same years, say that it takes two years to learn how to change a tire and change oil in a car, and there is a man and a woman in a situation where they need to change the tire and they need to get their oil fixed. And the first one to rush to it would be the man because men know more about cars, is what is said. Women can know a lot about cars, and there are a lot of women who do, and they know so much, yet they are forced to be put down because they show less satisfaction when it comes to fixing that car. But if we can prove that women can do this and we can push it out more, we can have the woman be first to rush to save, to fix the car. So another thing is that this wage gap is more than just a few cents. So it wouldn't be like a man gets five cents an hour. Back then it would be a man gets five cents an hour while a woman gets two cents. Now it's more than that. It's it's saying that a man could get 20 bucks an hour to work while a woman could get 10 or five bucks an hour. It's more than just a few cents and it keeps pushing down because we all think that women can't do this or women can't do that. When we know in our hearts that women can, we're just afraid to let them go. Yeah, um, I definitely think um, women are taught from being young girls that they should just accept everything given to them and just sort of being told to be quiet and be like being ladylike is like a whole concept that you're supposed to teach young girls when really that just means like sitting still and being quiet and having your legs crossed to not take up too much space and being very convenient for everyone around you um when really we should be teaching young girls to share their opinions and take control of their own bodies and be who they want to be not and be whatever kind of lady they would like um and i think that's just so important yeah because i also remember being told to be quiet stay in your place don't go out of line um cross your legs say thank you um please and thank you like manners yes we all get taught how to use manners when we're younger and we should keep those manners. It's just there is a point where you want to break it to show that you need to get your point across and that there are things that need to change, like the way that men see women. They see them as objects or ma maids or just anything below them. And we're just trying to prove that we can be equal that we're not on a lower level, that we are on the same level, and that they are not higher. Yeah, I think we've learned a lot today about what female experiences and history and statistics about um, women in the workplace and in real life too, or in casual life too. But so um, if anyone listening would like to learn more about female experiences or women's history, um, please go to our Women's Her Story event. Um, it is a video conference we are doing and um, the signups and more information about it will be in the description, so make sure to check that out. We also have an Uncommon conference and there will be more coming up in the future. Um, I would like to give a little 
quote real quick. This is from Rosa Parks and she says, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. So I wanted to send you off with that because women are sick of being put down and we would love to just rise to the occasion whenever we can. So if you ever feel like someone's pushing you down, remember this quote, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. So thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure to check out all of the Shout social media and hope you have a really, really nice day. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you.